One Piece continues its streak of amazing chapters one after another, with this recent one showing us two of the biggest names going one-on-one, -on -one, making it one of the biggest battles seen in the series so far. Garp is locked in an intense battle with former Marine Admiral Kuzan, who has now been revealed to be the 10th Titanic captain of the Blackbeard Pirates. We also learned of the outcome of the battle between the Blackbeard Pirates and the Heart Pirates in Winter Island, and we even found out more information about the mysterious man marked by flames that Kid and Blackbeard and perhaps everyone else who is after the One Piece are currently looking for as this man holds the location of the last Rod Poneglyph and whoever finds him will lead them closer to the One Piece. And in this video, we're going to discuss how all of these events taking place right now are all connected and are guaranteed to have a huge impact on Luffy and the Straw Hats. Starting with the circumstances that led Kuzan to join the Blackbeard Pirates. Because as we know, two years prior to the current storyline, Kuzan, formerly known as Marine Admiral Aokiji, had an epic battle with Akainu for the seat of the next fleet admiral. Kuzan ultimately losing the 10-day battle led to his resignation from the Marines refusing to serve under Sakazuki. And in this chapter, we learn that one year following the duel, Kuzan ran into some of the Blackbeard pirates on an unnamed island. And although their initial interactions were not so friendly, even resulting in Kuzan freezing some of Blackbeard's men, this quickly changed to them getting along when Blackbeard himself arrived on the scene, even inviting Kuzan to join his crew in the process. And this scene reminded me of the very first time Kuzan was introduced back in Long Ring Longland, as someone initially seeming unbothered but then quickly changing his mind and attacking the Straw Hat crew. This time, however, we witnessed this in reverse with Kuzan's initially seemingly tense appearance quickly becoming more laid back, keeping up with his unpredictable nature. Which I have to say made for a great interaction with the Blackbeard pirates and in my opinion just an awesome and much needed scene overall. As one of the main antagonists of the entire series, Blackbeard and his crew are often portrayed as dark and ominous forces. But seeing this antagonist crew just casually hanging out in a bar, laughing and joking around greatly humanizes them and adds further depth to their characters. It personally made them more likable as more than just the generic bad guys who attack others and take from the heroes and the innocent. It's also a good visual setting to show how Kuzan seems more comfortable hanging around pirates now free of his duties. It gives off the sense that maybe these free-spirited pirates are more his kind. Further emphasized when he switches to the discussion of his time as a marine officer discussing the events of Ohara, showing his misery comeback and the happy-go-lucky pirates recognizing this as one sob story. His freedom was again reiterated by Blackbeard, reminding Kuzan that he's free now and asked him to join his crew, to which Kuzan agreed adding yet another powerful force to the Blackbeard Pirates. It's a scene that adds yet another comparison to the idea that Blackbeard is simultaneously the parallel yet opposite of Luffy. And although I would say that Kuzan's fight with Garp was the most epic part of this chapter to say the least, I would honestly say that this flashback is my favorite part of the chapter. And not only because of the things I've already mentioned, but because it also gave us more information about the man marked by flames. The man marked by flames, or the man with the burn scar as per Viz's translation, was first mentioned in chapter 1056 by Kid when he and Killer realized they needed to step up their game in their pursuit of the One Piece. And now we have more information about this elusive figure. First is that he travels on a jet black ship. Second is that enemy ships that try to approach him get swallowed up by a giant whirlpool, indicating that the man marked by flames may have a devil fruit ability that allows him to achieve this. Okay, first of all, how crazy does that sound? And also, if he really does possess this ability, it makes it super convenient that Blackbeard now has in his crew perhaps the only man capable enough to counter a whirlpool and get close enough to this mysterious man. Because outside of Kuzan freezing the ocean to stop the whirlpool, I don't know how else you could counter such an ability. And even if someone else is capable enough to get close, say by flying, a man capable of creating creating such large whirlpools and evading so many others so far, probably more than likely powerful enough to fend off most fighters. But this makes me wonder if the eddy current that sent Bonnie to the Straw Hats is also the work of the man marked by flames. And to be honest, I do think these are all connected. And that the Straw Hats are actually closer to this flame marked man than anyone else currently searching for him. Could we possibly be seeing this man make an appearance the next time we go back to Egghead Island? He might even turn out 
out to be an ally and help the Straw Hats escape the Marines, led by Kizaru and St. Jay Garcia, who are rapidly making their way to Egghead Island. But more importantly, please make your way back to this channel by subscribing and clicking the notification bell. Now onto what the Blackbeard Kuzan Alliance has led to, because that gave us Garp versus Kuzan. And that was epic. The start of this chapter gave us a visual of how much damage Garp did to Hachinosu with his galaxy impact. And even though he destroyed enemies and a big part of the island, Garp himself says that he's lost his touch, which is ridiculous given the power he's just displayed. If I was excited at the thought of seeing Garp in his prime last chapter, this comment increased those sentiments tenfold. But of course, it's not all happy days because when Kobe and Hibari were about to reach Garp, Kuzan came out of nowhere to freeze Hibari, facing off against his former mentor. In fact, mentor isn't quite enough to explain their relationship, because we learn that Kuzan was formerly Garp's number one protege, therefore adding to the list of people that Garp himself have trained who would later go on to become pirates. But seriously, what I find unusual is the fact that Kuzan attacked Garp using his move Ice Ball, which seems to encase Garp into, well, a ball of ice. Instead of just completely freezing his entire body like he usually does against his other opponents. Now you can decide for yourself whether that's suggestive of anything, say for example, like he's just trying to go easy on Garp, or simply testing to see whether his former mentor still got it, or maybe he just wants to enjoy this fight longer for himself. But either way, Garp is literally so strong that this ice cube attack doesn't have an effect on him, breaking through the ice using nothing but his physicality. Again, it really made me wonder what exactly Garp would have done at Marineford if Sengoku Goku didn't stop him from going after Ake Inu, which is something I discussed last week, so feel free to check that video out. Garp in return uses an attack called Blue Hole, which is grabbing Kuzan's face as if he's just mere fodder and not the former Marine Admiral that he is, slamming him down so strong that Kuzan's body pierces through the ground below, which is a ridiculous feat for someone with no Devil Fruit powers. As for now, we don't know how far down this actually sent Kuzan, but imagine it in another scenario. If Garp did this, say, on a floating island, he could literally send Devil Fruit users all the way down. So far down that they would eventually end up in the ocean losing their Devil Fruit abilities and potentially dying. I mean, man, what a thought. It would probably have to be a much stronger version of Blue Hole. Let's call it Blue Hell, which is actually a much more fitting name. But I'm rambling again, so let's move on. This is one of the most exciting fights we've ever witnessed, and I'm glad we're seeing at least a part of it in action. Action. I really hope this continues and it's not something that gets off screen because we know there's a story between Garp and Kuzan's relationship that is sure to be interesting. It's just one of those fights that presents a perfect opportunity to take us into another epic One Piece flashback. Or it may be what finally leads to the reveal of Kuzan's true plans. Because although he seems to be serving Blackbeard for now, given what we know of his character as someone who, even up to his conversation with Smoke, stated that he was still himself. And unless that self was always rooted in the dark camp of the likes of Blackbeard, which I personally find unlikely, Kuzan has some other ulterior motive in mind. The last scene in this chapter finally gave us the outcome of the Blackbeard versus Law fight in Winter Island, with Blackbeard coming out on top again, defeating yet again another D-Clan member. In a similar fashion to Kid's defeat against Shanks, the Heart Pirate's ship, the Polar Tang, is completely destroyed and is currently sinking down to the ocean floor. Which begs the question, who exactly in Blackbeard's crew did this? Was it simply Blackbeard's power, or is it someone else in his crew capable of destroying a submarine in half? But that's about where the similarity ends, because Kit got put away by Shanks with one shot, and Law at least seems to have done a better job. I mean, we can at least see blood on Blackbeard's face, indicating that he did take some damage, and also Law's crew, while utterly defeated, seem to have also done a better job than just completely surrendering and begging for their captain's life. Because we finally see Beppo in his Sulong form, even without a full moon, and that's because of the use of a drug that Chopper gave him, making Chopper the Heisenberg of the New World. Beppo then fends off Black
Blackbeard's crew who are trying to decide what to do with Law and successfully flees with his captain but leaving their crew behind. And the first thing I want to discuss in this sequence is Blackbeard asking what to do with Law's devil fruit because he contemplates on whether to sell it or use it. But does that mean taking it for himself or giving it to one of his crew? Because Blackbeard using it himself tells us that 1. Blackbeard doesn't have a specific devil fruit in mind and he'll just take a strong power that serves him well on a whim, seeing as he targeted Law for his polneglyph and not for his devil fruit. And 2. If Blackbeard indeed already has another devil fruit in mind to steal, then this could actually suggest that he can house more than 3 devil fruits at once, which has been the widely popular idea. And the final thing I want to discuss is what does this mean for Law now? Where does his story go from here? I've mentioned before that Law's character arc and motivation initially revolved around his revenge for Corazon versus the Flamingo. And when that was resolved, it raised the question of where does Law go from here? He stated his new purpose at Wano, which was to find the meaning of the checkered fate. But the question now is how is he going to do this without his crew? It's well known that you need a strong crew because of how difficult it is to survive the new world on your own. We even see a lone wolf like Mihawk agreeing to team up with Crocodile after losing his status as a warlord to increase his chances of survival or for the sheer fun of hunting marines because he's a badass like that. But for Law to fulfill his new purpose, he will need to either get his crew back or form an alliance with another crew that will help him not only reach his goal but also get his crew back. And of course when we say that, then the first thing that comes to mind is the Straw Hats. I mean after all, they already have a history of being allies and now we already know that Egghead is quite close to the Marine Naval Branch G14, which is also where Sword gathered in Chapter 1061 before making their way to Hachinosu. So could we safely assume that Egghead may be one of the top contenders of places that Beppo takes law if it means that Winner Island wasn't too far from Hachinosu? Meaning that we could be potentially seeing a Straw Hat and Law reunion sooner than we realized. After all, if we are going with the assumption that the Straw Hats are indeed going to meet with the man marked by flames, then Law could be someone who also has some knowledge about this man. This is of course a stretch because I'm only basing this on his reaction to when Kid first mentioned the mysterious man. But hey, if you're a regular reader of One Piece, then you know that there is no such thing as a coincidence when it comes to this series. But these are just my thoughts on this chapter. Tell me yours by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to share and like the video if you enjoyed it and please do subscribe. Thanks again to listening to one of my rambles. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.